Hey everybody, and welcome back to another DRG episode. This episode will be focusing on the Driller and his Goo Bomber Special OC for the Sludge Cannon. This gun was added in Update 35, and it, of the four guns added, it is my personal favorite. It may not be, you know, the strongest damage or the biggest explosions or anything like that, but if you've watched any of my other videos, you'll know that I really like utility builds quite a bit. And to me, this has a lot of utility and is probably the most utility in the game that I can think of, besides maybe some kinds of bull electric builds or something like that. The nice thing about this OC is that you can do pretty much anything with it. You can do a normal shot focused kind of build, which is really just changing one of the modification slots, or you can go a charge shot build, and then within the charge shot build, there are a couple different options that you can run. So we're going to look over that during this video, and we'll talk about kind of how you'll use this and maybe some cool little things that you might not know that you can do with the sludge shot. And then we'll go and select the secondaries that you can choose with this, some that work well with this. You might be surprised at one of them. And then we'll go over the normal, you know, your perks and all that crap at the end. But you usually, if you've watched my videos, you probably know what I'll take, but I'll explain it anyways later. And as per the usual, these are for Has5 and up. If you've never used this OC before, what it does is instead of whenever your charge shot goes off, normally it shoots like a, jar, a large ball that explodes into other pieces. Instead, this shoots them out in a big line and they will drop over something like 30 meters or something like that, 25, 30 meters around that range, and they'll drop slowly. Um, so the you know you put it if you shoot it at a certain angle above you don't really shoot this straight you shoot it like up above everything and it will drop like a big line kind of like a sticky flame build but more you're aiming in the air instead of at the ground it works very very similarly to a sticky flame build so that's maybe why you would think I would like this one a lot as that is my other favorite build and this one is growing on me quite a bit. So we can start off with a charge shot build, and or just a couple of them, and see how, uh, how they differentiate from each other. And then we'll show you how a normal shot build can kind of work with this. You would think if you just read the OC, which, you know, it changes how the charged fragments work, it increases the fragment count and the damage, and it ex significantly extends the puddle lifetime. So this seems like it's completely focused on charge shot. And when I was first playing this, that's literally all I did. I would never shoot normal shots ever. I would only shoot charge shots. And even without any normal shots, literally ever, which I did a couple of times, this is still a very strong build. We'll go through the modification list like I normally do. Uh, but as I said at the beginning of this video, you really can kind of build just about anything with this build. In the first tier, high capacity tanks, better air pressurizer, and air sensitive combo are all very good, and really it's all up to your playstyle. If you like to shoot a lot without having to worry about reloading so often, well, then high capacity tanks is very nice for you. This allows you to shoot without taking the without anything affecting your charge shot, you know, amount. High capacity tanks allows you to shoot 10 charge shots in a row without needing to reload. Now, if you take Born Ready or anything like that, then you can shoot all of your shots and then switch over to your secondary. Now, after playing with this a little bit, you don't necessarily need this. It is nice having the extra ammo in your tank, but often you can really get away with just shooting one or two charge shots and then switching to just normal shots or melees or your secondary, and you won't even really have to worry about shooting the whole 50. Even when you're in very crazy moments, 25 is fine. It really can be fine. But if you don't like to reload or anything like that, then high capacity tank is totally fine. The better air pressurizer adds about 5 meters to the length and, you know, increases the velocity by about 33%. It does shoot it quite a bit faster and it's really nice for both of the kinds of builds, which is the normal and the charge shot. This one is just up to you, really. You can choose to do this one. Uh, if you're not really focusing on, you know, making a large puddle build or anything like that, then, uh, you know, the first two options are fine. If you're going for a more focus on your puddle builds, then the area effect is also very nice. The puddles get quite a bit larger, and it's really, really good because it shoots them in a straight line, and you'll have a very wide line for them to get stuck in, which is really, really great. And in certain areas, that means you could also save ammo because you could just shoot, you know, say there's a hallway, you can shoot just one shot down the hallway and kill or slow and whatever, everything in that hallway. So it really kind of depends on what you want. If you're wanting to use the charge shot but not really worry about the puddles necessarily, like buffing the puddles, that is, then the first two options are completely fine. If you're wanting to buff the puddles a lot with your charge shot, then the area of effect is fine. In the second tier, you don't go normal shot damage unless you're doing a normal shot build. You can do area damage, which I'm not 100% sure if that really works that well with this build, because normally the charge splash damage is when you hit them. 
with the charged shot, like the direct shot. So really, for this build, it doesn't seem that great because there's also charged fragment damage. If I was going to select anything, it would be the second option, which is area of effect, atomizer nozzle. This gives you more fragments on impact, and it also allows them to drop quite a bit faster. It's not an intended effect, I don't think, but since they can only go so far, and since they're now 18 instead of 12 counts, it does drop them a little bit faster to fill out you know, the, the whole length of the shot. In the third tier, total ammo is pretty much what you'll go every single time. If you're really wanting to go a heavy utility build, then I guess you could take super saturation, and it is nice in theory, but also you'll have to, re this with that build, without 50 extra ammo, you'll really have to be relying a lot on your secondary and your teammates and your just other parts of your kit. I have ran out of ammo plenty of times, even with going ammo. So it really depends on how you feel about the secondary. I think the driller secondaries are just meh. They're okay, they're nothing crazy compared to some of the other ones. Like they're fine, the EPC is fine, the Subita is fine. EPC being the better of the two, but they also, the good builds that go with this are kind of all charge shot builds as well. So you run out of ammo really quickly if you focus on using them too much. So for me, max ammo for this is always better. I'm sure somebody in the comments will tell me I am very wrong and say that duration is very good. I would still suggest total ammo. For the fourth tier, I pretty much always take ammo consumption. While the charge speed is really nice, like 50%, you know, quicker, is quite is, is quite fast. It really is. But if you do this correctly, you're generally going to be shooting at things from pretty far away, so you don't necessarily need the charge speed. Yes, it is good in a pinch, but it's not always necessary. And then, really, you're not going to die in one hit most of the time, so if somebody thing does get close to you, you could still tank a hit while charging something up and shooting the charge shot over their head and then running away because they're gonna get stuck in it. The ammo consumption always is going to help because every time you shoot, regardless of it's a normal shot or a charge shot, you'll be taking less ammo, you know, eventually, so it's just better for you in the long run, I think. Now for the last tier is where you can really change up things a little bit. I've said this probably in every video I've ever done, but the last tier is how you'll change everything up. Slow down is very good if you're going for a more utility build, very good for charge shot builds with large puddles and such. This is very good for static, you know, defense missions like scavenge missions, escort missions, uh, point extraction. All pretty good for those because you know where you're, they're coming from at all times and you can create pathways for them to attack you on and the slowdown helps you you know survive and helps your teammates get lots of kills if you're doing a little bit more damage and the corrosive damage is very nice this you'll definitely notice this killing them a little bit faster so it can be good this is very good for killing grunts and that's really nice because that's pretty much what this build is for these build this build is for killing the smaller things in mass slowing them down killing them allowing your teammates to kill them and really allowing you to use your secondaries a lot. So if you like to do that, then this build is really good for you as well. Now, the armor breaking is always very good. You can use this for this normal shot build or the charge shot builds. You know, if you are if you really want to help your team with Praetorians and such, then this is a great pickup. Now, if you're going to do a normal shot build, then really the only thing you need to change is picking the damage option in the second tier and taking probably none of the area of effect options. However, you could. You could just focus on using the damage modification in the second tier and that allows you to actually kill regular grunts in one shot and then it, and then using the dots to kill them. This will work pretty much every time. You can shoot them one time and, and run away and they will die from that. And so you can save a lot of ammo just by sh if you see a couple of grunts in your way, just shoot them each one time and they will die. You don't got to worry about shooting a charge shot or anything like that. And it's very nice in certain situations when a charge shot is maybe unnecessary or not that great. If you're getting swarmed out of nowhere and you didn't expect it or something like that, or you're saving a teammate, you know, whatever, but it's a bunch of grunts and low level things, you can spam some normal shots to get yourself some time, but it also hurt them very badly. So then you can get some time to shoot a charge shot, which will kill all of them. The normal shot build is pretty fun in my opinion, but both of them are really good. It really just depends on how you play and how it works with your team. A normal shot build could look like one or two. Hell, you could do area of effect if you like the charge shot with a little bit of normal shot damage, but you know, one or two are probably better in the first uh, tier of mods, and then the damage is it in the second tier is what you always go. I would go ammo for a normal shot build. I would still probably go ammo consumption uh, just so you get more shots. If I'm going normal shot build, 
I'm probably going corrosive damage in the last tier or armor breaking. Those builds are pretty good for this OC and you'll get a lot out of them. Your teammates will love you if you're using it effectively because it'll allow them to kill lots of stuff and be safe. This is a great weapon to protect your teammates because you can shoot it where they're going, where they might go, where they're being chased to, all sorts of things, and it will help them immensely to get lots of kills as well. So everybody loves you when you're using this gun. One thing you might not know about this gun is it can block spitballer shots. If you shoot a regular shot or a charge shot, you can block their shots completely rendering them pretty much useless so they look at you. Now normally, you can shoot anything, any gun at them, and it'll break. But this is very, very easy, especially if you're using the charge shot, because it's pretty much guaranteed to hit if you use that. And you might not also know is that this also works against dreadnought shots. You can shoot a regular shot or the charge shot at a dreadnought as it's shooting, and it will completely neuter it. I had this happen to me on an EDD where a, a dreadnought actually spawned uh, randomly in last week's EDD, and it was completely destroyed. I thought that this OC was probably not very good against Dreadnoughts, because I was like, if you're really playing these Dreadnoughts, then you're probably gonna focus on a Cryo Cannon. But this actually is very, very strong. If you use this against a Dreadnought, especially a regular Dreadnought, maybe not the Twins, but the Hive Guard, you can probably still use it against them as well. But this is definitely very good against regular Glyphid Dreadnoughts. For one, they get stuck. They get stuck in the slow, really easily. It's doing slow damage to them, which is okay, but then you're also blocking all their shots. If you're if you're putting up a good enough amount of fire at them, it's not only going to block shots from you, but it's going to block shots for your teammates as well. So the only way they'll ever get hurt is if they get hit by the AoE ground attack. One of the weaknesses for this gun is, which is pretty much the weaknesses for all of the Driller's guns besides the Crow Cannon, kind of, and a Think Attainment mod, are Macteras. This still does hurt Macteras pretty badly, and then adding in the slow effect is nice. You can use it to shoot them and then run away if you really had to. Uh, but still, you're pretty weak to them. So, you know, when that happens, when a Macteria Swarm comes, you can still use your Charge Shot and all those kinds of things to kill them. But you need to be on the move. You need to be moving side to side, using Dash, whatever it is, to reposition, because they're still going to get a shot off at you, most likely. Now, some secondaries for this gun. You can use... Persistent Plasma, you've probably seen me run that in my other builds, and running Persistent Plasma with a with a Thin Containment Field ending is very nice. There's like there's really a couple different Persistent Plasma builds you can run. You can run like 2, 1, 2, 2, 2. You can run 3, 1, 2, 3, 2. There's a couple different builds you can run with this, and they're all pretty decent. What's really nice is that you can shoot down a charge shot, switch over to your EPC, and shoot another charge shot into that, and then your dots combining on each other will definitely kill whatever is in there except for maybe praetorians and such so adding those together with the thin containment field is really nice thin containment field gives you a little bit of burst you can mine all that that grid stuff if you didn't take armor peeling on your main gun then this is a good way to take some armor off some praetorians another fun build you can run is probably the overcharger build you could probably run this like energy reroute or heat pipe magnetic cooling unit i don't know i didn't try those but you could run this with overcharger for sure and then use a flying nightmare build now, I assumed that Flying Nightmare was terrible until randomly some guy in one of my games was running it and I was seeing him just clear through waves and I was like, well, this would really probably work with this build. And I tried it out and I was running three, uh, one, one. You could run two in the third tier as well. Three and then one. And that allows you to kill regular gr grunts and slashers pretty easily. Grunt guards will need a little bit of more damage to them before you actually kill them very easily with this. But if you can find situations to line up your goose shot and this, you can kill huge swarms very easily, and it will feel fantastic to do so. Any subata build pretty much works with this. Um, as long as, you know, something is inside of your goo, you're probably going to kill him with it. It's nothing amazing. You can run a lot of different builds. Chain hit, automatic fire, homebrew, literally all of them I think you could run. So just whatever you want to run, it's subata, that's fine. EPC seems to be the better one for me. Now, if you don't want, if you don't know anything else that I usually run, then I like to run the charge speed for the pickaxe. I like to go, you know, three, one, one, two with my satchels. It doesn't really matter. That's up to personal preference. Uh, I like to go two, one, one, one with the drills. Also, some preference there. The grenades, you can do a lot of different things. This build, if you're running vampire, then impact axes are really good. If you're not running vampire, impact axes are also still really good. You can really run any of the grenades in this tier, honestly. With the neurotoxin grenade, you can just have dots on dots on dots. With persistent plasma, neurotoxin grenade, and sludge pump, you could have three dot things running at once, and it'd be kind of cool. 
You can do an HE grenade as well, you know, put down a couple of slow fields and then throw an HE grenade or two in there and you're probably going to kill most waves that come your way. And for armor, someone asked me that in a comment at one point. Uh, 3, 2, 1, 3 is pretty good. I don't really care for anything in the first tier besides the bigger mineral bag. I'm too lazy to keep running back and forth between things, so that's always nice for me. And I used to run shield a lot, but realistically, the max health is probably a little bit better more often, just in case, especially if you were accidentally to drop into a shield disruption mission. And then just having more health is always nice. And then I like to run breathing room at the end because I play pretty aggressively and I die. I die fr frequently, so I like to be safe when I get rezzed again. And for perks, there's a lot of things you can run. You can run thorns, you can run vampire, you can run sweet tooth, you can run veteran depositor, second wind, resupplier, born ready. All those are good. All those are good. It really just depends on what your playstyle is. And for active perks, I pretty much always want iron will and dash. You could run maybe field medic if you want, berserker if you're wanting to feel crazy, or see you in hell while, you know, all, all if you want to go kind of melee heavy inside of that, then that's fine too. Beastmaster is fine as well. Well, everyone, I know that this is a bit a long-awaited video for some people, um, and I appreciate everyone that has watched uh, the channel. It's been a while. I've been I had to get you know some multiple different jobs, and I've been in school, and I've been moving. It's uh it's been a little bit of a tough time getting into YouTube, but I want to come back and make some more videos because I've just really been amazed that people are watching these videos still. And I've had multiple videos now getting over 10,000 views, which is like been freaking crazy. And at the time of this video, it's like over 700 subscribers, which I'm sure I've said this in other videos. I never thought we'd get close to this, especially not even not even this quickly at all. And I took a huge break, you know, like five or six months or something like that off of this. And we're still getting lots of views. It's just crazy to me. So I really appreciate everybody that's, you know, liked, commented, subscribed, all that YouTuber crap. And uh, if there's anything else, you know you guys want to see i'm probably going to focus on driller for a little bit maybe work on some of the other new weapons but if there are certain videos you know certain builds you want to see done or have questions about just let me know in the comments and i'll see if i can work on one in the next video uh, once again thanks for watching and i'll see you guys next time see ya